Hey, my name is Rachel. Glad you could make it. It is week four, the final week in the Fiberfield 28 Day Plan. I'm almost done with it. It's been a journey, everyone. If you haven't uh, seen my previous videos, those are linked in the description box for you. So yeah, week four coming up. This is the most like challenging week for me in terms of new foods I haven't had. So first of all, I just want to say I have uh, gluten and grain sensitivities. I don't have an allergy. I do not have celiac. In this week four, um, since I don't have celiac or a gluten allergy, I will be having some whole wheat products, which is not so for me. There's some whole grain pasta and I got some whole grain rolls. It, throughout all this, whenever I'm buying, um, you know, anything like grain, bread related specifically, I'm really paying close attention to the ingredients, getting just the fewest ingredients possible, all like, you know, whole plant foods. I try not to get anything with preservatives. Same goes for like canned goods or anything. Like I try not to get citric acid or just any like kind of funky preservative type of stuff in there. And I I buy you know as much as I can organic I feel like I'm going into week four feeling great like I said week three I've been feeling pretty good nothing major seems to be happening I seem to have been tolerating new foods well let's see all the meals I had this week let's go for breakfast I did a quick fix option of making the superfood smoothie and only change I made I put some mixed berries in instead of just strawberries and then I made the turmeric latte so I made this with coconut milk there's you know different spices and turmeric and vanilla smoothie like seven and a half out of ten it's fine I've gotten used to this smoothie Ooh. oh my god that is so good that tastes like i got it like at a restaurant that's like a 10 out of 10 turmeric latte that tastes so good and i made it myself oh my god lunch is supercharged miso soup so there's the biome broth there's wakame seaweed tofu some veggies in there you're supposed to use soba noodles i ended up using these brown rice noodles i just i cannot even look at a soba noodle after last week that like sesame noodle bowl prep thing that was just like a bunch of soba noodles like i just it was so much and i don't think i like soba noodles i prefer rice noodles that is so good it's so flavorful i'm giving this a 9 out of 10. i am excited for dinner i'm having the leftover gumbo from the other week i'm kind of switching my meals around a little bit this is just what worked for me in terms of left overnight you know but yeah um after having it again it's still like it's decent i'd say it's like a seven out of ten i just don't think i actually like gumbo like i can get this down but i'm not like excited for the gumbo i think if you do like gumbo you'll be into it okay breakfast is a superfood smoothie bowl on top i have some strawberries coconut flakes, black seeds, sunflower seeds, and peanut butter. 8 out of 10. Love the toppings. Lunch is the Nourishing Buddha Bowl. I had this last week if you remember. It's like a lot of leftovers. I have salad greens, I have some chickpeas and cannellini beans, some brown rice, a bit of roasted asparagus, and then this tahini garlic dressing. 7 out of 10. It's fine. Dinner is supposed to be the nothing fishy sushi wraps, but I made a nothing fishy sushi bowl because I tried to wrap it like sushi. The instructions in the book are not helpful and I am bad at making sushi. I've tried in the past, just, just doesn't work. But we got nori in here. We got cucumber, some mango, some baked teriyaki tofu. We got some rice. And on top we have a homemade sriracha mayo. It's just like blended up cashews with some spices and sriracha. That was good. I love the mayo. 8 out of 10. Breakfast is that banana baked oatmeal. You were supposed to make this in like a pan, like a loaf of bread, but I didn't have that. I had a muffin tin, so I made little muffins. Uh, there's bananas in here, obviously. There's oatmeal in here, obviously. Some like regular baking stuff, some walnuts, and then I'm having it with some blueberries. And I just, I reheated these up. See, there's bananas at the bottom. It looks kind of gross. <laughs> it tastes really good. It's sweet. Eight and a half out of 10. These are so good. Doing another repeat for lunch. This is the Nothing Fishy Sushi Bowl from last night. So we got our baked tofu, cucumber, mango, avocado, nori rice, and that sriracha mayo. That's so good. We're doing nine out of 10 today. It's so good. 
Dinner is the chickpea meatballs pasta marinara and quick garlic broccoli. So I used those red lentil noodles and um, I made the chickpea meatballs the other day. They pretty much fell apart once I started heating them up again. Probably would have broken them up anyway. Um, and I got some marinara, the broccoli. It just has some like dry mustard, salt and pepper and like garlic. Pretty simple. And I have the uh, pepita parmesan on top. It's super tasty. I mean, you know, it's like noodles with marinara. The meatballs, like, they don't really taste like chickpeas, but they do taste like an imitation meatball, which tastes fine to me. And the broccoli's good too. It's simple. It's just like steamed, but I like broccoli. I'll give this meal an 8 out of 10. It's pretty good. Breakfast is creamy chai oats. So yeah, this is oatmeal made with uh, chai tea and you know, some spices some like super seeds like flax and chia and like a whole mashed banana. I wanted to make mine caffeine free, you know, chai tea is traditionally with black tea, but my anxiety is already through the roof. So got this chai rooibos tea, which is caffeine free. I got this brand. And then just for a reference, whenever I use vanilla extract, I use this kind, um, it doesn't have any alcohol in it. That's really good. I mean, it tastes like chai tea latte oatmeal it's missing something there's optional maple syrup i'm gonna put it on mm-hmm mm-hmm game changer eight out of ten all right lunch is supposed to be chickpea meatballs on a sourdough sub roll i couldn't find sourdough sub rolls so i'm just trying to make this work on my regular sourdough bread i toasted it in here, got more of the chickpea meatballs and the marinara from the pasta last night. Take a very precarious bite. I tried to like smush it down. This is good, eight out of 10. Um, probably would be better if I had a roll, but we're making it work. Dinner is the four bean chili. Super easy to make four different kinds of beans in here, obviously. Uh, a lot of tomatoes and uh, chili powder. It's pretty good. I mean, it's a flavorful chili. It tastes like chili. I think for just like a regular chili, this is like a seven. It's decent. It's good. Breakfast is the banana baked oatmeal again with a pool of blueberries. I just put these in the toaster oven for a little bit. I've been storing them um, in the refrigerator. Tastes just as good as they did the other day. Say eight out of 10. Big fan of these things. Lunch is Chili Mac. So this is the chili from last night is in there. There's some whole wheat macaroni noodles. I don't know the last time I had whole wheat noodles, wheat noodles at all. So um, scared, but we're gonna see how it goes. Trying to be confident about it. And then the cheese sauce is like cashews and bell pepper and you know, seasoning. It's good. I feel like, I know, I just taste the chili a lot. The sauce is okay. I've made better cheese sauces, I'm sorry to say. It's a seven out of 10. I feel like with some tweaks, it could be amazing. For dinner, it's supposed to be something different. I'll make it another day, but I just felt like having leftovers. Not in the mood to cook right now, so doing leftover chickpea meatballs and pasta marinara with the quick garlic broccoli. I don't know, six and a half or a seven out of 10, it's okay. Breakfast is something I've had quite a few times now. It's the chocolate peanut butter super smoothie. And I do modify it now. I put less almond milk in than it says and more frozen bananas. And it's so good, it's nice and thick. Eight out of 10, into it today. Lunch is a chickpea and avocado sandwich and some of the citrus and mint salad salad I had another week. For the citrus salad, I kind of modified it. It's just grapefruit with lime juice. I didn't feel like having oranges. I didn't want to have the mint. I don't like fruit and mint, so this is fine. And let's talk about the sandwich. There's chickpea, there's avocado, there's arugula, there's onion and cilantro and lime juice and salt and pepper. The grapefruit, let's give that a, a nine out of 10, a good grapefruit. Mmm, <laughs> that's good. Seven and a half out of 10 for the sandwich. Dinner is Tuscan kale soup. So there's kale in here, obviously. There's some white beans and quinoa, like thyme and basil, tomato. This is supposed to also be with the down and dirty kale salad. I'm really not that hungry tonight. I can't imagine I can eat soup and salad. So we're just having some soup. Definitely better than some of the other soups on this meal plan. Um, this is like a seven out of 10. It's decent, it's good. For breakfast, I'm doing the quick fix option of the superfood smoothie bowl. Um, 
abnormal smoothie and I have coconut and sunflower seeds and some blueberries on top. The breakfast you're supposed to have today is the spicy breakfast tacos. I had those last week. They are delicious but they're very labor intensive. I just, I don't want to do a lot of effort in the morning so we're quick fixing it today, you know. I made this too liquidy but it's still good. Um, 7 out of 10, you know, we're good. Lunch is the leftover Tuscan kale soup with some toasted sourdough with white bean hummus. This is just the same soup from last night. Uh, the hummus has like tahini, lemon, basil, garlic, and I use some cannellini beans. Soup's still good, like seven out of 10. Mmm. Give that an eight out of 10. Dinner is called the Sunday pasta. So this is some whole wheat pasta made with arugula, walnut, pesto. There's also tempeh sausage, which is really just crumpled up tempeh with a bunch of herbs and spices and some roasted cherry tomatoes. This sausage stuff is so good. Like I'll make this and put it on other things. It's good alone. The sauce is really good. This is a nine out of 10. Bonus meal! This is the Lentil Sloppy Joes with jicama fries. I've never had jicama fries. I've only had raw jicama and I just bought it pre-chopped. I don't know where I can even buy a whole jicama, but whatever. It's seasoned with like paprika and garlic and a bunch of stuff. And these Sloppy Joes! So there's lentils and onions and red bell pepper and like tomato paste, maple syrup, just like a bunch of different seasoning. And I'm using an Ezekiel English muffin as my bun. They are these ones. I was really looking for a nice whole grain bun but I just couldn't find any that had like clean ingredients and wasn't like bleached flour and these are good and they're like sprouted as well. The texture is interesting like it's still crunchy on the inside. They're kind of like crunchy and dense. The flavoring is really good. Kind of a little too salty. I'd use less salt than it says. A lot of flavor here. It's like sweet like a sloppy joe. I feel like overall this meal is an eight. It's good. It's kind of a lot of work, but it's good. And that is the fourth week, the final week of the Fiber Fuel 28 day plan. So this week, definitely a little up and down. I feel like at the beginning of the week before I introduce the whole wheat noodles and such, I was doing really great. I was starting to have some like very normal stools wild and crazy and feeling like my skin was just staying in a really good place from week three. I feel like overall this week the skin on my face has been doing good. Maybe a little bit of bumps on my forehead but like so minor, barely anything. And then again with my, my eczema on my hands mainly. I feel like the beginning of the week before the wheat was great. Didn't really see like anything on my hands and then once I started having the wheat having a bit of a flare on this hand. It was itching kind of a lot at some points, like right after I ate whole wheat stuff. But again, these are new foods and I just wanna give a comparison. So like when I used to eat whole wheat stuff, I would get like redness like all over my face, like rosacea looking kind of stuff, horrible headaches, my body would hurt. I can feel like the only real reaction I'm having from having wheat a few times this week you know, again, some eczema flare, uh, my scalp was a little itchy, um, and I feel like after I'd eat it, my stools definitely became like looser again, but not horrible. I don't know, my headaches slightly worse, but again, like really not that bad. So I feel like I'm tolerating the wheat better than I have in the past, and if I just continue to eat it while having a variety of foods in my diet, you know, eating along the fiber fueled lifestyle type of way, hopefully I can just heal these sensitivities. Like I've already seen major sensitivity improvement in terms of the oats like after I eat oats now I don't notice anything happening which is like compared to week one the first time I ate oats I was like oh my god my head hurts so bad and now it's like I don't see a change groundbreaking for me I wish I could say like I'm completely better now after these four weeks but that didn't happen and the book doesn't claim for that to happen in these 28 days it's to like set yourself up for success to be able to like eat in a way that makes your microbiome the best it could be. But I feel like overall I have been seeing improvements and that's what matters. What I'm doing seems to be working and improving my symptoms and you know, healing my gut issues. One thing I can say like during this, these four weeks, like I was just noticing like after I eat, 
like I don't feel very bloated anymore like I feel like for so long like after every meal I was just like I'm super bloated or like I wake up in the morning and then I know from the moment I eat my first thing like my smoothie my like that I would have I'd be like I'm gonna be bloated for the rest of the day and I was just like that's just what happens for me and I kind of accepted it but now that's like not happening like I'm eating like all these different foods and I'm not like bloated all the time like my stomach stays relatively the same like okay I'll be full of food and then it you know I digest and then my stomach is back to its normal place very exciting I wasn't having like horrible body aches this whole time which is something I was really worried about in terms of the new grains but I feel like it's mainly just manifesting as headaches you know I'm just tolerating these foods so much better than I used to in terms of my mood issues again I can't really say that I've had any changes or improvements in my anxiety and depression issues over these four weeks like it's up and down like how it usually is but again this in the long run having a healthier gut could improve my mental health because it's improving like my overall health so we'll see we'll stay tuned for that one and yeah I kind of want to talk about like what I'm doing moving forward from this so I feel like it feels like a big change to be like going from like I have every meal that planned for four weeks to being like what do I do now so my plan now is like I know what my favorite meals are from this like the ones I really like so picking out like my favorite breakfasts and lunches and dinner and sort of pick out like for the week like you know what are the the couple meals I want to have in rotation because again most of these recipes are for like two servings or more just having an idea okay I know I want to make these dishes this week buying the groceries for that and moving forward um, I want to incorporate more sprouts more fermented foods and just really trying to have those like 30 different plant foods a week like it recommends in the book if we want to recap uh, kind of like the fiber fueled lifestyle it's like fruits and fermented foods grains and greens omega-3 so that's like super seeds nuts all that aromatic so onions and garlic legumes and sulforaphane which is you know like broccoli and sprouts and Brussels sprouts and cabbage and those types of vegetables but I feel like the key here is getting a wide variety of foods in my diet and not skimping on you know nuts and seeds which I did for so long because I was like oh I need to keep my fats low because that's what it says to do in medical medium I feel good having nuts and seeds I mean there's so many minerals in them again over all of this um, definitely don't believe I've gained weight if anything I feel like I've lost a little bit of weight or slimmed down a little bit I like I said in my last video like I don't weigh myself I'm not measuring myself I don't know but I'm definitely not gaining weight on this eating this way and I feel like I'm just so much more like satisfied with my meals you know I eat however much I want and on all of this I've had like no cravings for any junk food I feel like I think of like you know like vegan junk food stuff that are the vegan cheeses and the crackers and like the chip things those are things I feel like I would be like mm, that sounds good like just like a normal like you have have, like cravings for things but I'm not like I'm not having cravings for anything I feel like that just shows that I'm getting my nutritional needs met and I feel like also in the past whenever I would try to keep my fats really low I would get like such intense cravings for nuts and like peanut butter and it would always be a thing where I'm just like once a month or so usually around my period I would like binge eat a bunch of like nuts or like peanut butter or some sort of nut butter like finish like a jar of peanut butter within like 24 hours and like I'm not having that compulsion anymore because I'm eating a good amount of nuts and seeds for my body it seems that I'm like doing good it's just working for me and I'm sticking with it I'm liking the fiber fueled lifestyle this is a whole foods plant-based lifestyle and yeah I'm gonna keep trying to not be gluten-free I'm definitely not gonna go into eating like refined grain foods like I'm not like oh yeah I'm just gonna eat Oreos and stuff now like no like I want to if I eat something that's wheat it's gonna be like whole wheat and you know maybe a treat every once in a while but still you know gonna work on healing that sensitivity by eating moderate amounts of the foods I have sensitivities to on a regular basis so that's gonna be oats that's gonna be wheat you know corn buckwheat quinoa I don't even like quinoa I can't say I'm gonna keep eating quinoa because I just genuinely don't like it overall I'm really happy I did this I tried so many new foods I found a lot of recipes I really like yeah it was kind of a lot of time in the kitchen but I have a lot of time at home these days I'm a happy camper if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up so I know you liked it you can subscribe to my channel I'll be putting out new videos every Monday and sometimes Thursday leave me a comment tell me what you thought about all this going on right here as always thank you so much for being here goodbye I cannot believe I filmed what I ate for 28 days, more than 28 days, because it was bonus days. I did it. I did it all. Blows my own mind that I did this.